Hi guys, this is the first of two videos on coastal management and in this video we will be learning about human interventions in coastal landscapes such as methods of hard engineering and soft engineering to alleviate coastal erosion and flood risk. So first of all we're going to look at human intervention in coastal landscapes and Coastal management is used to protect coasts from increasing pressures of both natural processes and human activities. So natural processes being forms of climate change and human activities being things like tourism and kind of developing around coastal areas. So the main aims of coastal management are to build flood defences and mitigate against flood risk which means kind of preparing and trying to prevent flood risk and also protecting against coastal erosion. The other aims of coastal management are to stabilise beaches from longshore drift, stabilise sand dunes and also protect fragile estuarine landscapes. So we have two different types of management strategies to manage coastlines one being soft engineering and the other being hard engineering. And we're going to go over these in greater detail, but to give you a brief overview, soft engineering is trying to work with nature during the management strategy and allowing natural processes to occur, such as erosion. And so soft engineering techniques are things like manage retreat, which we're going to look at, and not spending money on defences, but kind of letting nature take its course and not interrupting nature. Whilst, on the other hand, hard engineering is the opposite, and this is working against nature and kind of using special types of technology and implementing things like seawalls and gyrones, which are very expensive, man-made, built flood defences to protect the coastline. And these are mostly significant in areas where there's a lot of capital investments, there's lots of buildings and development which need to be protected. So some people think that the cost of building these hard engineering strategies are justified because they are protecting businesses so yes so now we're going to look at hard engineering in more detail this being an image of a seawall which is a method of hard engineering and we're going to learn about this a bit more later on so just a brief overview of hard engineering these are strategies which are making a physical change to the coastal landscape they tend to be very expensive they have specific purposes, which we will look at, and they are made of very resistant materials such as concrete, boulders, wood and metal. So they're very significant structures. And now we're going to go through the different types of hard engineering structures that we can find in coastal environments and look at how they work to manage the coastlines. So the first one is seawalls, and this is the photo of a seawall here. And seawalls, their purpose is to dissipate wave energy. So the waves that are hitting the coast and causing coastal erosion, these try to dissipate the energy of the waves. And this is due to their recurved structure. It's not very well shown in this photograph, but they are slightly curved. And this works to throw the waves back out to sea. So these waves are being thrown back out to sea, then hit the incoming waves and reduce their impact. So not only do they reduce wave energy, but they also are a physical barrier to flooding because they raise the height of the coast sand. So these are kind of multi-purpose structures and they are continuous facing because if there were any kind of crack in them, the water would simply erode it and it would become larger. So they have to have no cracks at all. And they also have little drain outlets, which could be found on the top here. So if any water does get above, it simply drains back into the ocean. The next defence we have is called rock armour and this is what we can see in this photograph here. It's all these boulders that are all kind of stuck together along the coastline and they can pretty much be defined as large boulders dumped in front of a cliff or a seawall and their purpose is to take the full force of the waves. So if they're taking the full force of the waves this means that the waves are not eroding the beach or any cliffs. And there aren't any cliffs in this photograph, but here it's protecting the shoreline from coastal erosion. They have an angular appearance. They use very angular rocks because this will increase the surface area of the rocks and it will allow the water to filter through and also acts to reduce the impact of the waves on the coast. So if the water kind of splashes up onto these rocks here, the water then drains through and this kind of slows down the energy of the waves.
and also the rocks are not secured in place and this is purposeful because if we get really really strong waves the waves can actually move the boulders about and cause them to rock and shake and this also acts to reduce the energy of these powerful waves and therefore reduce other coastal erosion taking place. Then we have structures called gabions. And gabions are very similar to the rock armour that we just looked at, except they're made of smaller boulders which are trapped in steel cages and they look just like this photograph here. And they are these blocks are often joined together to form larger structures, so they act as a coastal defence to erosion. Similarly, they reduce the wave energy and simply just protect the coastline from the waves. Then we have revetments and these are typically concrete or wooden structures placed across a beach or a coastline, as we can see here. Here is a wooden one, and these take the full force of the wave energy. So the waves will crash up onto these structures and stop the waves crashing onto the beach behind, so reducing coastal erosion and damage occurring here. So yes, it prevents further erosion of the coast because the waves will hit the wooden boards and then go back into the sea without eroding anything. Then we have groins and groins can be seen in this photograph here. They're typically wooden or stone or steel and they're breakwaters and they jut out from the coast at typically around a 90 degree angle and they are used to control longshore drift and we learned about longshore drift in a previous video but it's where if the waves are hitting the shoreline at an angle they tend to when they pull back they move sediment along the coast so the groins just act to trap the sediment and stop the sediment moving further down the coast and causing coastal erosion at one end and deposition at the other so this is to stop this sediment moving process through longshore drift but there are disadvantages of groins as they tend to increase coastal erosion further down the coast so while they're solving the problem here coastal erosion would still be happening further down the coast so that's a disadvantage and it's good to know some of the disadvantages here. Then we have cliff fixing and this photograph is not very good but it's simply when iron bars are driven into the cliff face as you can see this iron bar here and one hidden underneath here and they act to stabilize the cliff and also absorb some of the wave energy when the waves hit the cliffs to stop the erosion of the cliffs, so very simple. And then we have offshore reefs, and offshore reefs kind of look like this, or sometimes they purposefully use sunken ships and move them, and the main purpose of offshore reefs is to slow down approaching waves, so they're much weaker by the time they hit the shore. So they force the waves to break offshore, as you can see, if the waves would hit this structure here, and reduce impacts on either the beach or the bottom of cliffs. And often we find that reef material begins to colonise these structures, such as these sunken ships or these concrete structures here. And this can be quite good for marine ecology. And then we have barrages, which is our last type of hard engineering. And barrages are, as we can see in this photograph here, this is of the Cardiff Bay Barrage in Wales. And these are large structures built to prevent the flooding of estuary. So this is an estuary here, and the barrage simply protects the estuary by not letting in certain amounts of water. And simply it acts as a dam across the estuary, and it prevents the incursion of seawater into the energy. So we'd have seawater in here, and quite a lot of fresh water here coming in from the river over here because it's an estuary and this prevents their mixing and acts overall to protect the estuary environment through stopping waves getting in and all sorts. So that is a barrage. Now we're going to move on to methods of soft engineering and this photograph here shows dune regeneration which we're going to look at and soft engineering techniques just to recap techniques that work with nature um, so they're not acting against nature. So soft engineering techniques are a natural system for coastal defence. They tend to involve the use of beaches, dunes and salt marshes to absorb and adjust wave and tide energy. So the first type of soft engineering we're going to look at is called beach nourishment. And beach nourishment works to replace the material lost through longshore drift. 
So in longshore drift, the material is taken down the beach, such as sand is moved from one end to the other. So simply lorries will come or they might move it in other methods to move the material back up the beach from one end to another. And we can see that this is what's happening in this photograph here. Then we have dune regeneration. And often in coastal environments, sand dunes are easily disrupted by human activity because often humans will trample over them and so on. And this really damages these kind of very important coastal features because sand dunes actually act as natural flood defences. So dune regeneration is to try and reverse the damage caused by the removal of vegetation. And when vegetation is removed on dunes, this leads to further degrading of the dunes because the vegetation acts to protect the dunes from wind and so on. So the management strategies for dune regeneration include replanting the vulnerable areas, adding in more marron grass also, they often make dunes restricted areas, they put fences around them to stop people trampling over them. Also, they stop animals from grazing on them in selected areas and also in touristy areas they provide boardwalks around them or over designated paths so that people don't damage a large extent. And also it's helpful to provide information to tourists about protecting dunes so to try and educate them about the situation, and this can often help a lot. Then we have a process called managed retreat, and this is simply the abandoning of current line of sea defences and letting nature take over. So it involves developing land with salt marshes to reduce the wave power. So where an environment would have typically been managed, they've let the seawater kind of take over and form a salt marsh environment over time and the salt marshes will form naturally and this allows these lowlands to be flooded and the land will naturally be reclaimed by marsh plants so it's simply letting nature take over and if no one's building or using on these areas this acts as a defense from rising sea levels because when sea levels rise these areas will be flooded um, not areas where humans are living and working and then we have land use management and Land use management involves planning for future development, so stopping people building important buildings in areas that are at high risk from flooding or coastal erosion. So you can see in this photograph here, here we have a coastal environment which is heavily built upon and it's almost a plan of action to stop people building like this and to leave coastal areas untouched because it means that people are therefore not putting their livelihoods at risk or their businesses or their homes or their schools and they tend to use this land instead for things like grazing animals because when a storm is coming the animals can simply be moved away and the land is left open to nature and no property is damaged but a disadvantage of this is that it limits the use of land in coastal areas because certain areas will be restricted from building upon and then finally the last soft engineering strategy is to simply do nothing and let nature take its course if a flood does happen, compensation will be paid, and this is seen as being a cheaper method overall. So yes, doing nothing is also seen as a strategy of soft engineering. And this is because it's seen to be cheaper to do nothing than to build these huge flood defences through hard engineering, and I said it's cheaper just to pay compensation when things do get damaged. Hi guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level geography resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. See you soon and together let's make A-level geography a walk in the park.